Be having fake, well, we'll do it afterwards. Okay. Anybody want these for the drawing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, now you're interested. Ah, oh, really? Cool. Cool. So you guys pass them. Yeah, it's just a drawing for the box of stuff in here. Mm-hmm. It's a hat, shirt, Hawaii vacation, you know, the usual. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Questions about this amazing film? The, the footage that you got in there is uh, of the band. You know, oh, stock footage? Yeah. Weird. Well, there wasn't much, you know, like anybody in uh, any time in those days, you didn't actually take a camera to work. So if it wasn't for Hal Blaine, we'd have no stills. I mean, he was a shutterbug, he used it, you know, that was his thing, he would just take pictures. So thank God he was taking pictures. But no one had any, um, no one had any, you know, video cameras. And I asked everybody, and I finally said, Hal, did anybody ever have, you know, 8 millimeter, 16 or anything? He says, well, there was at one time. He says, I took an 8 millimeter camera to the studio and we were having a party and it was a joke and I took a bunch of footage of these, you know, the session guys and I intercut it between a porno. All right. All right. So I said, so he sent me this 8 millimeter porno and I couldn't figure out how to transfer it because it was like so brittle. You know, can you imagine it's 45 years later and it's like breaking. So I had to do a late night transfer, and I took him into a lab, you know, and yeah, you know, because that's the only place that would do it late at night. It was you couldn't take it to a mom and pop because I didn't know what, the, what was on there. He just said it was porn, out. <laughs> and it's porn. It's just porn. Sixties <laughs> porn is just as good. Um, so if you want to buy the DVD, that will be on it. I promise you. That. <laughs> So how do you get the DVD? It's not available oh, yet. Yeah, it's not available. Here's the situation. I don't know how much. Just real quick, how many people have been to the Facebook or on my website? Oh, that's a good amount of people. Uh, how many people heard about this through uh, XTN? Excellent. All right. The problem with what's happened is, as you saw, it took, I started this in 1996. I got to a point where we crossed the line where I've spoken about this before, as a filmmaker or artist or whatever you want to call it, you went too far. I spent everything I had, but I had to keep going or we just wasted, you know, as my wife was concerned, it was going to be the most expensive home movie in, in history. <laughs> and so I basically, we did what you're not supposed to do, the cards, the, you know, mortgage and all that. 2008, we got a cut. We got into South by Southwest. We went to Nashville. We did really well. We started going around the, country, around the world. People were picking it up, winning awards, unbelievable reviews, but no one wanted to take it on. They said it's a music documentary. So that's what's so extraordinary to be here with all these other films. This is, this is a really hard market to break, music documentaries. They said, for, for years, you'll never get this done because of the music. That's because of the licensing. Um, I'm, scr- I'm rambling, sorry. But basically, at first, the music was so expensive, I had to go back and renegotiate. And I got it down to a $300,000 pickup instead of a $700,000 pickup at one point. And they still want to jump in. Distributors say music documentaries don't sell. Well, I disagree with them, and I continue, and that's why we're just keep going until we pay that $300,000 off. So we've been doing donations, like Kickstarter type of stuff, but screenings, place, you know, fortunately for here I had a sponsor that helped us out. Um, but as soon as we paid down to zero, then we distributed. How far are you away from that? Well, you know, the New York Times thing yesterday kicked unbelievable for me. I mean, I mean and I think we raised $25,000 in the last three days. It's just people out of nowhere. People donated five dollars. People donated a thousand dollars, and it just came from all over the world. You know, I, this thing has to be told. I mean, the music companies are not the enemy. I don't know if you, anybody read the article. My biggest concern was he was going to the writers going to start a fight with the, me, and the, I did not want that fight. They've given me what they need, what they could. So. Yeah. Hey, what was your uh, dad's favorite performance of all the songs he ever played? It's a good question. His favorite performance. Um, you know what, if he wanted to be remembered for anything, I think it would have been for his film music. 
Because when you had John Williams or James Horner writing something, right. knowing he's writing gut string guitar, that pretty stuff, and he knows he's going to use Tommy to die. My father knows it's being written for him. I think that's, as a player, that was it. You know, so can Batman. I borrow a pen? What's that? Can I borrow a pen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Borrow a poor, poor man up there needs a pen. Okay. <laughs> I, you, you know, yeah. Batman was probably good for him. Yeah. <laughs> the rights to the music, were, were any of the rights holders interested in, in helping? Helping, yeah. Like, I mean, is like a story well, they want to tell it? You know, it's hard. Herb gave me his masters for free. Nancy gave me her masters for free. The other people, the labels, don't care. I mean, not that they don't care. They really don't, really don't care. They're all struggling to keep a job. Anybody in the position I'm talking to, might not be there next week. So that's what it's been. I mean, I've had to go back and pay, you know, bills and go, oh, that person's not there and start all over. You know, knock on wood. They haven't run into a problem yet. So, yeah. Oh. I was wondering, did these musicians get any of the royalties for this music? They get royalties. Uh, it's a good question. Royalties. They don't. They get royalties when a song goes to a different medium. If you, don't forget, these guys were all union musicians, so what, it was very good for them because there was an established, you know, union there. So it protected them. You know, my father said, as long as my my uh, name's on the contract, I'm fine, because he knew he was going to get paid, and he had, you know, and if it went to, let's say, a commercial, like my mom got a uh, check for "Be My Baby" recently for three hundred seven dollars. Now. He probably only got paid 50 when he did it, but it changed to a commercial, and that's right. I think it's a right to be paid for that. You know, it's changing mediums, you're selling the product with the song that they created. Um, that came up the other day in the, from that writer of the New York Times that said, because now there's a thing where uh, artists are getting their masters back, you know, in like 1978, there's some weird law thing going on. And he said, don't you think the, the studio musicians should give paid back for it. I said, not really. You know, that coming from a son of, my father, as long as he gets, as long as they get paid for the song going to a movie, he gets money, or to a TV show, or something that's being reused. But if that person, I just didn't feel like it was right. It's the artist's work, not their work. You know, so. so thanks so much for bringing it here. I've been wanting to see it ever since it came out. Thank you. Uh, I was looking at my last frame, but not too much more time to pass, so keep going on and on. Uh, but I assume since you've made it, more of these people have passed away? Uh, um, that's what I yeah, it, unfortunately, I, I want to introduce someone here, actually. Jean, are you around? Where are you, Jean? Jean Caton? Up there is a lady, uh, Jean Caton, her brother, Roy Caton, was a, one of the great trumpet players of the time. And he was one of the Passed. We just lost, um, you know, Al Delori passed. A lot of these people that might not even be in the film have passed. It's it, one, I think, within one month, I had lost four people. You know, they're not in the film. Most of them, of course, most of these folks have passed. Thank you, Mr. Father and Carol K. That's yeah. 1996, when they were talking to each other. <laughs> I was surprised I didn't see uh, much about Leon Russell. Leon did not want. He did not want. Leon's a huge part of this group. Leon didn't want to do it, mm -hmm. and it's a bummer. I don't. I tried. But he's very shy. You know. I was surprised I didn't see more about him in the film. But you know what? You could. Here's the reason. I there was so many storylines. I could have done. You know, if there's any uh, criticism of the film, why isn't it Leon? Why isn't Billy Strange? And why isn't James Burton? And why is it? After a while, it's like, you know what, as my editor said, you've got to stop interviewing people. <laughs> she said, you can't put everybody in. You won't fall in love with everybody. And I said, well, that's why God gave us DVDs. <laughs> you know, and that's what I keep doing. Like, Tuesday, I'm interviewing one of the percussionists, Frank Cat, because I want everybody's story to be told. I have James Burton. I have Billy Strange. I have uh, Richard Carpenter, Petula Clark, uh, Jackie DeShannon, all these people I've basically interviewed, and that's what's going to be on the DVD. So when someone gave me possibly a, I say possibly a big donation yesterday, he's taken over a chapter of the DVD. 
He's going to present that chapter. I'm selling those chapters off on the DVDs to raise money. No. So. Yes. Thank you. No, that's a, it's, a, it's a very funny question. The reason I'm smiling is when she saw the film, by the way, every time she sees it, she cries. And she sees it all the time. <laughs> so, but when she saw it, she says, I didn't know I was going to be in the movie. I said, what do you think I was doing? <laughs> I thought it was for the kids, the family. It's like, you know, she always has her eyelashes on. God, you know, when she passes, those eyelashes will go with her. <laughs> but, no. Um, you know, I still ask her questions. I asked her a question the other day, which was, I wish I would have asked on camera. Did Dad ever, you know, when he was working with Peggy Lee in the clubs and stuff like that, did he ever take you to work to meet these, you know, to see these dates? And she says, no, Dad said a plumber doesn't take his wife to work. <laughs> <laughs> and it made sense, you know. How many just musicians out there? Raise your hand. How many non-musicians? Raise your hand. <laughs> Excellent. That's what happened. I'll get my third chord down, as I said earlier. So, you still saying you're musicians, or you want a question? <laughs> Yeah, on the website there is a somewhat, there's a lot of contracts that AFM has been giving me and posting. Uh, so that's been good. Uh, but it's hard because they didn't know what they were doing. Unless I look up that certain song, I won't know what they, who's on it. So, yeah. Oh, I have to again. Brian Wilson is a tough interview. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I mean, it's tough. I mean, God bless him. He's, you know, difference between Brian Wilson and Jimmy Webb, you know, Brian Wilson was 11 minutes of film, exactly, you know, and unfortunately I didn't get a lot, that's where an editor helps. Uh, but Jimmy Webb, I had an hour of tape, and any one of you could have given out a number within an hour, and that would have been in the film. That's how good it was. Articulate. Extremely bone how another one extremely articulate, great stories. It's hard. Sometimes they're really good, and sometimes they weren't that, you know. But you, I got what I needed. Yeah. Um, I'm sure yeah, there is, it, it is, it's going to, there's, a, well, there, Ken Hartney came out with a book, which is uh, pretty good, and there is another book, you know, well, the original book is really Hal Blaine's book, which is out there. And that's really, you know, where it all started. You know, some people say, well, you know, did Hal make it up? I, you know, off the record, I think Hal made it up. I think it came out by accident, just the legend has grown bigger. The name. Oh, no. I, 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 I want all my transcriptions, I want to include it in the, if not the DVD or whatever it is. You know, it will be there. Um, that's why it's kept going. I'll, I'll donate it to a museum soon. Hopefully soon. Yeah, yeah, there will be. There's another one called by a guy named Ken Sharp, who's actually doing longer interviews with people all over. So. How long ago was the Glenn Campbell footage? Glenn was about eight years ago. You know, and that was a tough interview because I didn't. Now you look back, go, oh, that's what was going on. So there was something going on then. You know, I'd ask five questions, different questions, and got some of the same answers. But, you know, amazing interview, though. He was, that was his favorite time in life for him. He loved being a side guy. You know, he loved, the, you know, being with musicians and, and not having that pressure. You know, if there's a great story about him opening for the Doors, it's on the website. You know, he got up to Seattle to open for the Doors. He says, where's my band? And he says, no, no, you're just doing so. And I'm like, oh. You know, and he just got buried. You know, by Doors fans. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> oh, the Colin, the guitar player. Colin. Well, the, the, who? How many knew about my father's Colin and guitar player? There's a few. That's good. Well, uh, he would do. This what kept him going in the '80s. I think he learned. He became a better player, better all-around player. That's why I was very upset when he had the stroke in 1992. Because hanging out with the younger players, he, you know, he developed into something else. And when he did the article for Guitar Player, 
the, for the people that don't know what it was about, it was just about exactly what he said. It was give the date, who he worked for, John Williams, uh, 20th Century Fox, the movie uh, Temple of Doom or whatever. This is what I played, Bazooka, da da da. And he'd tell you how much money he made and everything. He was very honest. And then he'd tell these amazing stories or funny stories. But he would, you read them like he was talking. But with, you, we didn't have computers then, so my mom was there typing. And my, it was like, you know, end of the month, just like high school, scrambling, oh, I gotta get this out, gotta get this out. <laughs> and he'd be standing there and he said, all right, uh, there I was, 20 century five, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 I don't know, I don't like that. Let's do it again. And you could see the steam. And then it was like, it was, I always call it like Schroeder. You know, and that was a Schroeder. Who was the piano player? Schroeder. Schroeder. When Lucy and he does that one finger, cheek, cheek, cheek on the piano. And that was my mom with the whiteout key. And by the end, there was always a good fight. There was always fights in the family there, but this was, he knew it was going to be a fight, so. Do you have any guesses on when the DVD might be released? I think by Christmas. I really believe, you know, you know, I'm going to D.C. tomorrow, or Monday. I'm hoping that there's a company there that's going to be interested. But, you know, it's spread the word. These films will not get out unless there's someone that's going to put it out. I can't do it. I don't have the artillery or the means. I mean, I... I could put a DVD out and just keep going around, but you need to have a bigger, um, you know, now it's downloads. But DVD is really what it's going to be. How many groups did your father play on got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Oh, that's a good question. How many groups did they play on? I don't know. I don't know how many groups that got into the uh, Hall of Fame. I don't know. And Beach Boys, Janity, I mean, anything that's up there. So, Mama's Papa's. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, is it? well, it's so funny because I'm, you know, I'm going to have breakfast with uh, Alan Flutsky tomorrow. Um, it's a long story. I mean, those guys, you know, they went to Lions Day. When I went to Lions Day, thank God I didn't, this film came out, thank God it was successful. Because I would have, you know, it came, I didn't see it until after I finished my cut because I was like, panic, I'll die. But as a friend from Discovery said, it's a just different take. And I didn't know what to take their take was. So it was, but, I went to Lions and said, hey, that film you made a lot of money on. Yeah, but that was years ago. That's huh. what they said. And it's like, our audience is not dead. <laughs> so, listen, I think they want to, listen to pull this, but I will we'll go in the other room. We can continue.